हेलो बच्चो सत श्री अकाल नमस्ते फ्रॉम माई साइड अव यू ऑल सो गाइज दिस इज इंद्रजीत सिंह अगेन वेलकमिंग यू ऑल इन टू द मोस्ट सेंसफुल प्लेटफॉर्म एंड टू द लेक्चर ऑफ द विक्ट्री बैच ओके एंटायर रोटेशनल मोशन वॉज डिवाइडेड इन टू दी टू पार्ट्स द फर्स्ट वेंट ऑन राइट कंप्लीटली ऑन टू द सेंटर ऑफ मास ओके एंड इन टू दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू कवर द मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया टॉर्क some of the basic things right and the rolling motion so i think it will be the end of the rotation motion so boom i think yesterday is uh, right a day before yesterday two of the most important sessions went on okay and i uh, hope you uh, enjoyed a lot and give the awesome response it was a last minute revision on the j okay last minute revision on the j So guys, guys, I was uh, uh, tell you all uh, that. Mm. Mm -hmm -hmm. Uh, thanks, thanks, thanks a lots of uh, right thanks uh, from my side. Okay, that you all cooperated us and uh, gave the awesome response to the team. Okay, uh, actually we are not uh, like a motivating factor. You all for you all, you all are the motivating factor for all of us. because whatever the things we are doing whatever the hard work we are doing day and night and obviously we are getting the good response from your side okay things are like on the seventh heaven for us okay it's uh, right uh, they the spark us okay the trigger is that we are we want to do this thing we want to do that we want to do this and that and lots of new creativities and lots of new ideas we want to represent okay no block will be empty no corner will be empty from our side into the preparation of the j and neat okay there is only one thing that is the continuous response from all of your side you are giving also but please maintain that right guys so i think uh, today will be the awesome part uh, it will be the one shot lecture on the rotational motion and obviously we are going to uh, right enjoy this a lot okay because we are going to start with the moment of inertia okay see if i am going to compare right the previous session we started we uh, saw the center of mass in the respective cases we saw the uh, center of mass for the discrete particles right we saw the center of mass for the respective formulas and some of the derivations for the, uh, this one uh, continuous bodies after that we saw the uh, the center of mass for the combined bodies and then we saw the center of mass for the bodies with the cavities the motion of the center of mass and the acceleration of the center of mass okay after this the entire chapter is divided into the moment of inertia right torque the dynamics right angular momentum and the rolling so i think that thing we are going to cover up in today's lecture and we are going to enjoy a lot hope so you are uh, right you will be ready okay for this enjoyment so i think we should start okay this was the center of mass that we covered up now today we are going to move forward with the moment of inertia right shall we begin i think yes okay see what actual is the moment of inertia okay moment of inertia is nothing else but the takleef sir you told us that inertia is also the takleef then how moment of inertia is also how uh, the two things into the physics right okay are having the same uh, concept Okay, having the same logic but with the two different identities, that's not so possible. Okay, how how moment of inertia can be uh, right the cliff. Okay, so I'm going to compare this stuff and you are going to enjoy this part. Okay, see suppose I'm going to see entire chapter is maximum right comparison or the use of the translational motion and the rotational motion. So the cliff in what terms the the cliff I'm talking about. So for that. Okay, let's compare the translational motion on one side and the rotational motion on one side. Okay, translational motion on the one side and the rotational motion on the one side. Okay, uh, inertia is all about the translational motion. okay if you just remember the lecture of the newton's law of motion we have discussed this inertia inertia was let us take an example okay this is an object initially at rest u is zero suddenly as because of some external force right it starts moving with some velocity v 
and it might uh, right increase with respect to time. So what is inertia here? Object want to be in its older state of rest, but as of the external force, he has to change its state, right? So while uh, having a transition from the older to the new one, right? The internal property of the matter that acts that the cleave the body is feeling is inertia. I'm going to give you all the simple comparison of it, right? I am going to give you all the very simple of comparison of it. It's uh, 10 a.m. into the morning and again we are on the bed. <laughs> Mummy is saying, Beta Ujja. No. <laughs> and suddenly what she, she pours the entire bucket of the water on her head. So you want to be in your older state. The state of rest. But suddenly as because of the mom's bucket of the water or as because of some external force, suddenly you gathered up. You change your state. You felt that the cleaf, na? That is the internal property of matter and that is inertia. Okay. That is the internal property of the matter and the inertia. Right? Yes or no guys? Okay. So, translational and the rotational motion. Okay. Translational and the rotational motion. So, in this case, I want to tell you all. Okay. Same thing happens. Suppose initially the disc is at rest. Omega is an angular velocity of the disc. Initially, the disc is at the rest. Now, suddenly as because of the external torque, right? Suddenly as because of the external torque, it starts rotating with the final angular velocity omega. And obviously, this omega is increasing with respect to it. So, into the rotational motion, what was the previous state? The previous state was a state of rest. Okay, but as because of external torque, state change to the motion. Okay, so from rest to the motion, the internal property of the matter that felt the cleave, the body that felt the cleave in its internal matter, that is moment of inertia. Then uh, some students might be thinking, sir, you uh, discuss right the same definition for both of the cases. So guys, here I want to tell you all the one is a translational motion right the change into the state of the translational motion that the cleave felt is inertia similarly analogous to it right the state change into the rotational motion from rest to the motion right so in that case whatever the cleave that is felt that is moment of inertia like in translational motion the things happen as because of the external force suppose force is constant so acceleration is inversely proportional to mass Similarly, here, here things happen as because of torque. Suppose here torque is constant and alpha is inversely proportional to I. Okay. So in translational here, in rotational I stands for moment of inertia. Analogous to it, in translational M is for inertia. Okay. In translational M is for inertia in the rotational, right? This I is of the moment of inertia. Here, as because of the external force, the state is getting changed. Here, as because of the external torque, the state is getting changed. Okay. So, this was the fundamental explanation of the moment of inertia. Okay. The fundamental explanation of the moment of inertia. Uh, in general, in resources, it has been told, moment of inertia, it is nothing else but M k square where k is known as the radius of gyration okay k it is known as what right radius of gyration okay so in this case right we are going to discuss that part but before moving on to the uh, right radius of the gyration we need to discuss what actual Okay, the gyration is and what actual is a rigid body. See, rigid body. Right. It can be of any arbitrary shape and size. But what is an actual definition of the rigid body? 
डिस्टेंस बिटवीन दी टू पॉइंट डिस्टेंस बिटवीन दी टू पॉइंट ऑलवेज रिमेन्स कॉन्स्टेंट इन एनी केस डिस्टेंस बिटवीन ए एंड बी इज नॉट गोइंग टू चेंज राइट नॉट गोइंग टू चेंज इफ यू आर अप्लाइंग एक्सटर्नल फोर्स दिस डिस्टेंस इज नॉट गोइंग टू चेंज सपोज इफ इट इज राइट द बॉडी इज स्लाइडिंग ऑन द रफ सर्फेस राइट दिस डिस्टेंस इज नॉट गोइंग टू चेंज सपोज हीट इज अप्लाइड टू दी बॉडी दिस डिस्टेंस इज नॉट गोइंग टू चेंज प्रैक्टिकली रिजिड बॉडी इज नॉट सो पॉसिबल right practically rigid body is not so possible but in uh, the, from the theory point of view we need to take the concept of the rigid body else lots of questions are going to come in which right uh, the body is applied to the rough surface sliding on the rough surface and there is a possibility that mass may get decrease okay from the practical approach so that thing we want to completely avoid it okay so as of that reason obviously we are taking the concept of the rigid body whatsoever the rigid body you are taking into the application into the numericals it is not so affected unless until and unless it is mentioned into the question until and unless it is mentioned into the question now we saw the formula of the moment of inertia as i is equal to m k square right k is the radius of gyration generally what happens if i'm talking about the disk then this is of the symmetric shape then r is the value of k because uh, right the radius is right equally into the all directions like that way right radius is equally into the all directions right yes or no okay it is equally into the all directions now what happens here right it is equally into the all direction but suppose if i am talking about this rigid body and let's say uh, right this point a is the center of mass of the rigid body okay then this distance is r1 this distance is r2 this distance is r3 this distance is r4 this distance is r5 this distance is r6 they are not equal so in that case we need a right uh, root mean square value of the radius that represents right the actual or i when say the nearest value of the radius of the rigid body it can be of any arbitrary shape and size suppose if this kind of the body exists then what they are going to do they used to consider s k as root mean square r1 square r2 square dot 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 r n square whole divided by n square this is nothing else but the radius of gyration right this is nothing else but the radius of gyration okay so you all know uh, see there is a difference okay so this always used to get into the cows right uh, they are always in, in the myth that uh, the radius is gyration is itself a radius no there is a difference between the radius of the object and the radius of gyration okay radius of gyration changes with the uh, change into the axis of rotation radius of gyration changes with the change into the axis of rotation that thing i'm going to discuss it now okay the most important thing about moment of inertia right the most important thing about moment of inertia okay the most important stuff now what does it states right what does this moment of inertia states right. first let us take an example suppose this is a disk right okay this is an axis of rotation okay about which there is a possibility the first thing that on which the moment of inertia depends moment of inertia first depends on axis of rotation right second mass distribution 
अबाउट एक्सिस ऑफ रोटेशन ए ओ आर स्टैंड फॉर एक्सिस ऑफ रोटेशन राइट एंड द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन एक्सिस ऑफ रोटेशन एंड सेंटर If this axis of rotation is far away from the center, right? The moment of inertia value would be more. If the dis uh, the the axis of rotation is nearer to the center, right? The moment of inertia would be less. Okay, the moment of inertia would be. Okay, see. Suppose if it is nearer, then moment of inertia is minimum. Okay, as the formula state I is equal to m k square. right now what is going to happen slowly 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 if it is we are moving forward i is directly proportional to k square suppose here the k value is continuously increasing then what is going to happen right the moment of inertia value is going to increase the moment of inertia value is going to increase and suppose if you are going to be near to the center of rotation right then the moment of inertia is going to be minimum okay now similarly the classification of the moment of inertia what does it states right the classification of the moment of inertia moment of inertia right it is classified okay for the discrete particles and their system same classification right okay as we have seen into the center of mass okay it is defined for the continuous bodies right and finally it is also defined for the bodies the combined bodies and bodies with cavities right so this thing we are going to discuss it further right the moment of inertia its respect to classification the formula and all of those stuff let's move on to it right okay so first of all let's start with the moment of inertia for the discrete particles and the n number of the systems okay so if i'm talking about the moment of inertia for the discrete particles right moment of inertia for the discrete particles right now what is going to happen suppose this is the axis of rotation about which a, a small discrete particle of mass m right it is rotating the distance between the axis of rotation and the perpendicular distance that is r for this moment of inertia it is defined as small m capital r square now suppose there are n number of the particles right suppose there are n number of the particles okay this is an cartesian coordinate system x axis y axis right z axis let's say this is m1 this is m2 this is at the distance r1 this is distance at the distance r2 so the resultant moment of inertia of the system is m1 r1 square m2 r2 square for the m particles dot 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 right m n r n square right so this is how the moment of inertia for the discrete particle system is identified like analogy right analogous to the what we can say center of mass center of mass was having the special formula for the rigid bodies similarly the moment of inertia is also having the special formula for rigid bodies okay moment of inertia is also having the special formula for the rigid bodies So if I'm talking about the moment of inertia, right, for the rigid bodies, okay, how we are going to define that, okay, I that is is equal to integration of d m right into r square, okay. This is formula for moment of inertia, right, for the rigid or you can say the continuous bodies. With this. i'm going to give you all the examples right the continuous bodies the first right the moment of inertia for the continuous bodies the ring okay sphere 
ओके हेमिस्फियर राइट रेक्टेंगुलर प्लेट लॉट्स ऑफ टर्स राइट डायरेक्ट फॉर्मूलाज आर देर आई एम गोइंग टू गव आई एम गोइंग टू गिव यू ऑल बट 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 देर इज एन इंपॉर्टेंट नीड वी नीड टू डिस्कस आउट सम डेरीवेशन ऑल्सो ओके सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट स्टार्ट विद द डेरीवेशन ऑफ द रिंग there is one ring this is an axis of rotation okay there is one ring this is an axis of rotation about which okay there is one ring the axis of rotation about which okay it is rotating okay the axis of rotation about which it is rotating now what happens here how i am going to define the moment of inertia for this let's say take one elemental mass of dm with dx right of dm with dx so moment of inertia for the continuous body it is defined as integration of dm into r square here ring is of the uniform mass distribution okay uniform mass distribution if it is a non uniform mass distribution the value of dm changes here it is of the uniform mass distribution so the value remains right unchanged so finally the moment of inertia for the ring we are going to define it as m r square moment of inertia for the ring using the simple formula if you have if you uh, right remember the last lecture then you have might have seen right we have seen the formula of the moment of inertia sorry center of mass for the continuous body in which we have seen the derivation of semi circular ring okay similarly here the ring structure is there now suppose if we want to calculate the moment of inertia right for the disk of the radius r right disk right the same formula we are going to use right the same formula we are going to use but what happens here we need to take one of the elemental mass into it okay so here we are taking the elemental mass as a ring okay step 1 elemental mass is selected as ring with the radius small r this ring shrinks to zero as it is an elemental mass so it shrinks to zero and maximum it can expand to capital r so the value of the small r ranges or changes from zero to capital r so in another sense i can say right small r lies between zero and capital r this is the range and this is going to be the limits of integration this is the range and it is going to be the limits of the integration right the limits of the integration okay now how what formula i'm going to use i is equal to integration of dm into small r square okay now small r right small r okay can i consider this is equation number 1 what happened here okay can i consider this is equation number 1 yes now disk is of the uniform mass distribution right it is of the uniform mass distribution so can i say right lambda is equal to right dm right by dx dm that is is equal to lambda into uh, dx 
ओके लेमडा इंटू डी एक्स और यू कैन से डी आर इट्स नॉट अ बिग डील ओके नाउ हियर सपोज इफ आई एम रिप्लेसिंग लेमडा एज मास पर यूनिट लेंथ इंटू डी आर और डी एक्स लेट से दिस इज ओके डी आर डी आर ओके ना वट इज द लेंथ ऑफ दिस रिंग द सर्कम फरेंस राइट लेंथ ऑफ द रिंग दैट इज इक्वीवेलेंट टू दी सर्कम फरेंस इफ यू वॉन्ट टू कीप इट इज द लेमडा यू कैन इट्स नॉट अ बिग डील इट इज नॉट इवन गोइंग टू अफेक्ट दैट पार्ट ओके सॉरी वी डिड अ मिस्टेक दिस इज ऑफ द आई एम सॉरी फॉर दैट ओके स्मॉल मिस्टेक वी डिड ओके Suppose disk is of the height h. We want to. We can resolve it using the three D. Okay. We can resolve it using the three D part. Now, suppose disk is of the height h. Now, what we are going to do? Okay. Here, density that is is equal to mass per unit volume. Okay. As because of the uniform mass distribution, can I say it is dm by dv? So dm it is defined as mass per unit volume into dv. can i consider this is equation number 2 volume of the disk that is is equal to surface area into height h okay so can i say uh, dv by dh okay so sorry dv by dr okay so it is dv by d of r that is 2 pi r into h so dv that is is equal to 2 pi r h into dh can i consider this as uh, equation number h dr can i consider this as equation number 3 okay now what we are going to do we are going to replace all of those into this equation i is equal to integration of dm into r square first of all if i am going to replace this dm value okay then it is m by v into dv m by v into dv this comes from the volume mass density generally in maximum number of the cases the disk is considered as a 2d part but the actual derivation into the actual derivation we are considering the entire rigid body including the width okay the entire rigid body including the width so here mass that is capital m volume that is is equal to surface area pi r square into h dv that was 2 pi r into h that is dr pi is going to get cancelled right h is going to get cancelled right 1 r is going to get cancelled okay 1 r it is going to get cancelled now what is going to here okay what what is going to happen here okay how we are going to define this stuff okay so uh, this is mass per unit volume okay this is mass per unit volume and this dv is something else right okay so this is going to be 2 pi right small r into h into dr and this is the formula of r square h h is going to get cancel pi pi is going to get cancel r square is going to be same so it's m by r square integration of you can say 2 m by r square integration of r cube okay that is d of r okay the limit of the integration moves from 0 to r so from this the moment of inertia of the disk about an axis of rotation passing through the center of mass it is going to come upon as m r square by 2 okay this is the moment of inertia of the disk about the right this m r square by 2 about the axis of rotation that is crossing through the center of mass about the axis of rotation that is crossing through the center of mass right sorry for the derivation because sometimes it happens students also used to get confused in between the derivations of the uh, the inertias and the center of masses but generally from the je point of view see neither from boards or je okay this all of those derivations for the explanation purpose from the je point of view all of those times right from the je point of view all of those times right only the formulas are going to help us 
right only the formulas are going to help us not think else right now these are the formulas okay after this we are going to see the perpendicular and the parallel axis uh, theorem and directly we are going to jump on to the formulas and the respective examples right see now this is a simple derivation the formula of the moment of inertia this is for the disc mr square right this is for the solid sphere right this is for disc this is for rod this is for ring okay this is from one side of the rod okay this is for hollow sphere like this way moment of inertia for the square plate for the rectangular plate for the cone for the triangular plate right all of those respective formulas are given you are having might be having into the resources and obviously with the sums we are going to discuss each and every thing okay so now let's move on to the next part now we are going to deal with the two most important theorems these two important theorems right are going to help us in solving the maximum number of the questions based on moment of inertia maximum number of the questions based on moment of inertia the first is the perpendicular axis theorem first is perpendicular axis theorem the most important thing about the perpendicular axis theorem that it is only applicable to 2d objects it is only applicable to the 2d objects right only applicable to 2d now what does this thing before moving on to this theorem you need to understand two things that are quite important from questions point of view it's solutions point of view basically in uh, all of the questions of the moment of inertia you have to deal with two types of axis of rotations the first one is k a o r that is a known axis of rotation this is that axis about which you already aware of you already are aware of right the specific formula of moment of inertia the second that is d a o r that stands for desire axis of rotation right this is axis of rotation about which moment of inertia needs to be calculated and obviously this is asked into the question this is asked into the question right asked into the question the axis of rotation about which moment of inertia needs to be calculated the axis of rotation about which you are aware of the formula this two things are important if very simple and non technical explanation i'm going to give you all if k a o r is perpendicular to d a o r then you have to use the perpendicular axis theorem the axis about which you know what actual the moment of inertia is right is perpendicular to the axis about which you want to find the moment of inertia then you have to apply the perpendicular axis theorem suppose if the 
नोन एक्सेस ऑफ रोटेशन इज पैरल टू दिजायर एक्सेस ऑफ रोटेशन ओके देन यू हैव टू अप्लाई द पैरल एक्सेस थियरम मार्क माय वर्ड्स परपेंडिकुलर एक्सेस थियरम इज ओनली एप्लीकेबल फॉर टू डी ऑब्जेक्ट पैरल एक्सेस थियरम इज एप्लीकेबल फॉर ऑल राइट पैरल एक्सेस थियरम इज एप्लीकेबल फॉर ऑल इज इट कूल गाइज कम ऑन एवरी वन दो आर लाइव ओके इज इट कूल Now what happens here? See, very simple. Maximum for all rigid bodies, right? Into the formula, as you all you all are aware of what actual the moment of inertia is about axis of rotation that is passing through center of mass. For all of the cases, you are aware of the formulas. Suppose if I am talking about the disc. then axis of rotation about which that is passing through center of mass the moment of inertia is mr square so this will be my known axis of rotation now suppose the question says that we want to find the moment of inertia that is parallel to the plane right and crossing through the center then this will be my desire axis of rotation the known axis of rotation and desire axis of rotations are perpendicular to each other immediately we should all have a click that we have to use the perpendicular axis theorem okay we have to use the perpendicular axis theorem yes or no guys okay we have to use the perpendicular axis theorem now what is going to happen here what actually it is going to happen here the known axis of rotation the desired axis of rotation the known axis and desire axis suppose the desire axis is this even this is also right uh, the perpendicular to the known axis of rotation but here okay first of all we are going to apply the perpendicular axis theorem okay then we are going to apply the parallel axis theorem so this is the difference you should all aware of right you should have this thing into your mind now let's move on to the write the statement of the right perpendicular axis theorem and its respective example suppose this is a disk right i am talking see mass is distributed right of the disk this is y axis this is x axis and this is z axis right okay i am taking one particle here of mass dm okay this distance right okay if particle is rotating along the y axis then radius is y if it is rotating with respect to x axis then radius is x suppose it is rotating with respect to the center of mass with respect to axis of rotation passing right through center of mass according to the pythagoras theorem the r is going to be under root of x square plus y square okay r is going to be under root of x square plus y square yes or no guys so here can we say that r square that is equivalent to x square plus y square r square that is equivalent to x square plus y square now what uh, right it's it's going to happen let's multiply dm r square on the both side dm x square dm y square this is the moment of inertia if particles rotate with respect to x axis so can i say i of x this is the moment of inertia if particle rotates with respect to y axis this is with respect to z axis and this is the proof of perpendicular axis theorem right 
the proof of perpendicular axis theorem on the simple explanation of right the proof of the perpendicular axis theorem on the simple explanation right on the simple explanation of the pythagoras theorem okay i am moving aside on the countdown of 10 seconds okay you can take more than that if you want to just note down this proof because this proof is given minimum right into the minimum number of the resources it has been mentioned okay so uh, let's give you all 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 0 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 minus 6 minus 7 minus 8 minus 9 minus 10 let's take an example to understand this stuff right let's take an example suppose disc is there the question states that find the moment of inertia about the axis that is parallel to the plane passing through its center of mass It means they are saying we have to find the moment of inertia about x axis or about the y axis. This is our known axis of rotation about which the value of moment of inertia is known. Mr square by 2 for this of uniform mass distribution. This is our desired axis of rotation. Both are perpendicular. Right both are perpendicular it means we are going to use the perpendicular axis theorem according to perpendicular axis theorem according to the perpendicular axis theorem simple i of z that is is equal to i of x plus i of y about i of z we are aware of this value right so it's m r square by 2 that is is equal to i of x plus i of y done now with respect to x axis fold the system mass is equally distributed on all sides with respect to y axis fold the system mass is equally distributed if about two axis if mass is equally distributed on either sides then moment of inertia for the both of the axis will remain same this thing we have seen how moment of inertia depends right on what value the moment of inertia depends see axis of rotation mass distribution about the axis of rotation mass distribution about the axis of rotation right mass distribution about x and mass distribution about the y is same right so for that reason this two is going to be same and moment of inertia of the disk after applying the perpendicular axis theorem or you can say about the x-axis or y-axis that is it is going to be mr square by 4. This is how the perpendicular axis theorem is applied. This is how the perpendicular axis theorem is applied. Yes or no guys? Okay. Now let's move forward to the next that is the parallel axis theorem. As usual. Whenever... The known axis of rotation is parallel to desired axis of rotation. Whenever the known axis of rotation, it is parallel to desired axis of rotation. Okay. Known axis of rotation that is parallel to the desired axis of rotation. We are going to apply the parallel axis theorem. How? 
Now the question states. The actual formula of para see, parallel axis theorem is also having the proof, but we are not going to waste time on that. Parallel axis theorem states that, see, moment of inertia about the desire axis of rotation. About the axis of rotation that, suppose let's take an example. This is the moment of inertia for the known axis of rotation. Desired axis of rotation, it has the distance r. This is desired axis of rotation. Both are parallel, right? This is applicable to all objects 2D and 3D. Now, both are parallel, it means we can apply the parallel axis theory. So what does the statement state? Desire axis of rotation is equal to known axis of rotation plus m r square. R is distance between two parallel axis of rotations. Right? Two parallel axis of rotations. This is a right general formula that we are going to use for all of those continuous bodies okay the general formulas okay moment of inertia is quite easy students always used to get confused into the calculations of masses and dimensions okay calculations of masses and dimension always they used to get confused in calculations of masses and dimensions right so parallel axis theorem i d axis of rotation known axis of rotation plus m r square or you can say m d square okay where r o d is the perpendicular the distance between the two parallel axis okay distance between the two parallel axis let's have an example to understand this stuff suppose disc is that now we are having the two values of the moment of inertia. The first one about an axis of rotation that is crossing through the center of mass perpendicular to it. Four. Okay. We have to calculate the moment of inertia about this axis. That is I1, that is at the r by 2 distance and second is this axis, I2, that is at the r distance. Okay, we have to calculate, see I1 is parallel to the center of mass, I2 is parallel to the diameter, diametric, this is also known as diametric axis of rotation. So first of all, we are going to apply the perpendicular axis theorem to find the moment of inertia. That is moment of inertia through center of mass plus m of d square. This is a natural formula. Moment of inertia through center of mass, it is m r square by 2 plus what is this distance r, m r square, r by 2 whole square that is m r square by 4. So I1 that is going to come upon as 3 m r square by 4 by parallel axis theorem. By parallel axis theorem. Now for I2. I2 that is again again to the diametric axis of rotation plus m of d square. Diametric axis of rotation m r square by 4 plus m r square. I2 that is, is equal to 5 mr square by 4. I2 that is equivalent to 5 mr square by 4. So this is how right uh, the parallel axis theorem is root. Moment of inertia for the combined bodies and everything we are going to see. But first of all, let's see some of the sums right based on the moment of inertia and cavity. A light rod 
of length L has two masses M1 and M2 attached to its two ends. The moment of inertia of the system about X is perpendicular to the rod passing through the center of mass. What does this system states? It states that mass 1, mass 2 attached to the light rod. Attached to the light rod. Light rod, it means uh, negligible mass. Negligible mass, it means minimum inertia. It means the, the moment of inertia of the rod we are not going to consider. The resultant moment of inertia of the system that is, is equal to moment of inertia for M1 plus moment of inertia of M2. Moment of inertia of M1 plus moment of inertia of M2. Now what is going to happen? First of all, we need to locate the point of the center of mass from it. So the formula of center of mass that is M1 R1 plus M2 R2, right? Whole divided by M1 plus M2. So from this, suppose we are locating, let's say, right? Okay. This is the reference point. Okay. So it will be M1 into 0 plus M2. Length of the rod is L whole divided by M1 plus M2. So the center of mass, it is M2 whole divided by M1 plus M2 into L. For first particle, the radius is M2L by M1 plus M2. For second particle, the radius would be M1 by M1 plus M2 into L. So if I'm talking about the moment of inertia, so it is M1 R1 square, M2 R2 square. So I that is, is equal to M1, right? What is R1? R1 is M2 square, L square whole divided by M1 plus M2 whole square. Again, plus M2. What is the value of R2? M1 square m1 plus m2 whole square into l square now we are going to resolve this and find out the uh, specific answer okay okay so i it would be m1 m2 m1 plus m2 whole divided by m1 plus m2 whole square l square this one is got cancelled. So the moment of inertia of the system is I is equal to M1, M2. M1 plus M2, right? Okay, L square. This is a resultant moment of inertia for the system or the combined bodies. A is the perfect answer for this specific question. A is the perfect answer for this specific question. I'm moving aside and the countdown of uh, right 5 seconds. If you want to just note it down, you can. It's 5, 4, 3, Two, one, that's it. Three identical spherical shells. Three identical spherical shells, each of mass M and radius R are placed as shown into the figure. Consider an X is X, X dash, which is touching the two shells and passing through the diameter of the third shell. Moment of inertia about this X axis. Three spherical shell, moment of inertia is of the combined bodies. That is I1, I2, I3. Okay. For this shell, for this shell okay this is the distance r this is the distance r about this moment of inertia is 2 by 3 mr square about this moment of inertia is 2 by 3 mr square first of all we need to apply for this two shells let's name it as 1 2 3 for second and third shell this is a known axis of rotation. This is a desired axis of rotation. Both are parallel. It means we need to apply parallel axis theorem. 
आई वन आई टू आई थ्री इज इक्वल टू आई फॉर आई वन इट इज टू बाई थ्री एम आर स्क्वेर फॉर आई टू एंड आई थ्री मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया इज सेम बिकॉज द सिचुएशन इज सेम सो आई एम गोइंग टू राइट इट आउ टू इन टू नो नेक्सिस ऑफ रोटेशन टू बाई थ्री एम आर स्क्वेर प्लस एम आर स्क्वेर राइट सो दिस इज गोन बी आई इज इक्वल टू टू बाई थ्री एम आर स्क्वेर प्लस राइट दट इज फाइव बाई थ्री टेन बाई थ्री एम आर स्क्वेर ट्वेल्व बाई थ्री एम आर स्क्वेर फोर एम आर स्क्वेर दिस विल बी द रिजल्टेंट मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शी ऑफ दिस सिस्टम बी इज द परफेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस स्पेसिफिक क्वेश्चन okay simple but more than that nothing b is a perfect answer for this specific question let's move on to the next question based on the moment of inertia the moment of inertia of the disk of mass m and radius r about an axis which is tangential to the circumference of the disk and parallel to the diameter we are talking about a disk we need to find the axis uh, the moment of inertia about axis that is tangential to the circumference and parallel to its diameter this is an axis right about this we are known mr square by 2 about this we are known it is mr square by 4 now this diametric axis is parallel to the desired axis this is a known axis of rotation right this is a desired axis of rotation both are a parallel and that the distance r so let's apply parallel axis theorem on applying the parallel axis theorem what happens right i about the desired axis of rotation is equal to i about the known axis of rotation plus m of d square no axis of rotation it is mr square by 4 plus mr square so the moment of inertia about the desired axis of rotation it is 5 by 4 mr square a is the perfect answer for this specific question in moment of inertia you all will aware you all are aware of the logics but you always will get confused into the solutions and the calculations moi always you will get confused into the calculations nothing else right always you will get confused into the calculation now let's move on to the next part okay the ratio of the radius of the gyration of the circular disk see circular disk we need to calculate the ratio of the radius of gyration about an tangential axis in the plane of the disk tangential right into the plane of the disk and we need to compare for the disk and the ring for ring okay for ring same for ring we need to calculate the radius of gyration ratio for this i1 we calculated as 5 by 4 mr square i1 that is is equal to 5 by 4 mr square if i am comparing right to the actual formula of moment of inertia right then the radius of gyration i am going to get it as under root of 5 by 4 of r right now for ring if i am applying about uh, see the moment of inertia for the ring uh, it is mr square by 2 if we are applying the perpendicular axis theorem now if you want to calculate the moment of inertia about this then now apply the parallel axis theorem then it is going to be 3 mr square by 2 right now if we are comparing the 3 mr square by 
to the formula of m k square k2 then k2 you are going to get it as root 3 by 2 right of r can i consider this as equation number 2 what we need to calculate calculate the uh, ratio of 1 by 2 then it is going to be root 5 is to root of 6 this is how the radius of gyration is involved into the moment of inertia right and the c is a perfect answer to the specific question let's see the moment of inertia for the combined bodies and the cavities disc is of the radius r another disc of the uniform density but the radius r by 2 is kept what will be the resultant moment of inertia for the system resultant moment of inertia of the system what is going to happen here two discs are there so it means moment of inertia that is, is equal to i of the larger disc i of the smaller disc but here masses are not given this is a confusion for all of the students whenever into the calculations of the center of masses and the moment of inertia if masses are not given always jump off to the calculations of the densities through densities you can calculate masses through density you can calculate masses right so first mass of the larger disc density into area density into pi r square can i consider it as capital m yes mass of smaller disc sigma into area pi r square by 4 m by 4 we got that masses now you are going to get in confused because things are going to be in i slowly slowly we will move on i1 plus i2 moment of inertia for the combined bodies now for the larger disc this is our known axis This is our desired axis of rotation. For the larger disc, from the desired axis of rotation, right, we can say it is m r square by 2 plus. Now, things are going to be weird for the smaller. For smaller, from the center, right, the formula states mass of smaller disc into radius of smaller square by but this is about the axis of rotation passing through the center of mass. We need about this. So what it is going to happen? Mass of smaller disc, radius of smaller disc whole square by 2 plus we are going to apply the parallel axis theorem. Mass of smaller disc, right? R by 2 whole square. This distance is D and that is R by 2. Okay. So this would be m r square by 2 plus what is the mass of a smaller disc m by 4. What is the radius of the smaller disc r square by 4. This 2 is of formula. Mass of smaller disc m by 4 r square by 4. m r square by 2 m r square by 32 plus m r square by 16 m r square by 2 plus 3 m r square by 32 right 19 m r square by 32 this will be the resultant moment of inertia for the system for this system of the combined bodies right for this system of the combined bodies suppose we are going to change that part okay suppose
this much amount of the cavity is cut previously the same amount of the disc was kept now we are going to discuss the moment of inertia for the bodies with the cavities this much amount of the cavity is cut what is going to happen so the resultant moment of inertia that is is equal to ma moment of inertia about the larger disc minus moment of inertia about the cavity minus for the larger disc this is our desired axis of rotation larger see now we are again masses are not given so first of all we have to jump off to the densities and calculate the masses mass of the larger disc is m for the smaller disc it is the cavity it is m by 4 m r square by 2 minus mass of the smaller disc radius of the smaller disc by 2 okay plus we have to shift up to this mass of smaller into d whole square okay i of r that is is equal to m r square by 2 minus mass of the smaller disc is m by 4 radius of the smaller disc is r by 2 and that is r square by 4 formula is of 2 plus m by 4 into r square by 4 so this is m r square by 2 minus 3 m r square by 32 13 by 32 m r square this is the resultant moment of inertia for the system with the cavity okay this question is asking main stand and this is the homework from my side okay homework from my side I think that's enough for moment of inertia. Now we are moving forward to the torque. Right? We are moving forward to the torque. So, uh, students, till now we have seen through the concepts of, uh, right, uh, the moment of inertia, the center of mass, all of the stuff we saw. Now, let's move on to the most important, the dynamics part, right, in which we are going to see the torque and conservation of angular momentum see angular momentum and its uh, relative di relevant directions you all are aware of so but a maximum number of the questions they had been the most expected part is from conservation of angular momentum right so we are going to see that right, what kind of the questions they are been are they are asking from torque right and what kind of the question they are asking from the conservation of angular momentum now let's see see before moving on to the dynamics part right we need to move on with a uh, this some of the important variables right see that's it's a very simple difference that i want to show you all in front if i'm talking about the rotational part right and if i'm talking about the translational part if i'm talking about the rotational part and if i'm talking about the translational part right translational motion in translational motion we are having displacement right we are defining it as an s we are having the linear velocity of a particle we are defining it as a v we are having the linear acceleration of the particle right we are defining it as an a we are having a right momentum of the particle right we are defining it as a p we are defining right the force of the particle as f relevant to this linear variables we are having the angular variables linear variables are for the translational motion while the angular variables are for the rotational motion all of those angular variables there is uh, one important note regarding all of, the, uh, of this this angular variables they always lies on the axis of rotation right they are the see basically two kind of vectors are there polar vectors and axial vectors right axial vectors are those that lies on the axis of rotation and specially for right they are for uh, the rotational motion right 
So maximum, if I'm, talk, if I'm talking about the rotational motion vectors, right, these angular variables, they all lies on the right axis of rotation. So for displacement, against the displacement, right, analogy to that, we are having the angular displacement, right, and that we are, right, uh, right uh, the, the notion is theta. Against to the velocity, we are having the uh, angular velocity for the rotational motion, right, and we are defining it as an omega. Against to acceleration, we are having the angular acceleration, right, and we are defining it as an alpha. Against to momentum, we are having the angular momentum, right, so we are defining it as an L, right. And against to force, we are having torque. That's why the torque is defined as the rotational analog of the force, right? The rotational analog of the force, right? So these are some uh, linear variables, right? And on the opposite to that, there are some angular variables. There are some linear variables and opposite to that, there are some angular variables, right? Now, there are some relation between them. Suppose if you want to uh, calculate the S, then it is always R into theta, right? If you want to write down V, then it is always R into omega. If you write down uh, the uh, relation of the acceleration, that is always R into alpha. If you want to write down the relation of the momentum, right? So this angular momentum is always RP, right? Or RMV, right? And if you want to calculate the torque, that is RF, right? This all are of the magnitude I'm talking about. So this is all are the relations between the linear variables and angular variables, right? This is a linear variable. This is an list of the angle. This are the this is a list of the linear. This is for the angular, and this is the relation between them, right? So in dynamics, I think we are going to maximum deal with this kind of the quantities, right? And rest of the thing, I think they are going to come in front, and you will be aware of it. So after center of mass, after moment of inertia, yes. Now we are going to deal with the Torque, rotational analog of force, right? If I want to define torque, right? Simple, rotational analog of force. Force, it is going to increase the linear acceleration of the object or the, see, uh, Whenever the acceleration is applied on that object, obviously the velocity is going to increase or decrease. Again, I'm going to take one example. So it's a very simple thing, right? Suppose this is an object, right? It is of mass m, right? Initial velocity is zero. Suppose acceleration is applied. Velocity, obviously, either it is going to increase or it is going to decrease. Suppose it is going to increase because acceleration and velocity, they both are in the same direction. It means whatever the forces applies to the object, it is right increasing the velocity of the particle now this is for translational motion now same happens for the rotational right same happens for the rotational let us take an example right the disc initially at rest initial angular velocity is zero disc initially at rest the initial angular velocity is zero now suppose suddenly a tangential force is starts acting into the object and this velocity is getting increased to omega, right? It is going to increase right to omega. So it means if this tangential force, right, is producing a torque, it is producing a torque that changes omega it produces a torque that changes the omega right okay so here the omega is getting changed here force was responsible to change the velocity of the particle here the tangential force is responsible to change the angular velocity of the particle so here the torque is produced that's why it is the rotational analog of the force. Examples of the torque. You can see spanner. Torque. Torque. 
टॉर्क दिस इज टॉर्क दिस इज टॉर्क दिस इज टॉर्क राइट सो दैट राइट द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग द टॉर्क ओके द रोटेशनल एनालॉग ऑफ द फोर्स द फॉर्मूला ऑफ द टॉर्क दैट इज ऑलवेज आर क्रॉस एफ द क्रॉस प्रोडक्ट ऑफ आर क्रॉस एफ और आर एफ साइन ऑफ थीटा राइट एंड यूनिट वेक्टर एन ओके नाउ इन दिस केस राइट गाइज दिस इज एचुअल फॉर्मूला ऑफ द टॉर्क राइट एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट राइट टॉर्क टू बी मैक्सिमम जनरली दिस इज ऑल्सो वी आर यूजिंग दैन इट इज ऑलवेज आर एफ इन टू यूनिट वैक्टर एन राइट इन टू यूनिट वैक्टर एन दैन इन दिस इज द केस इन विच द टॉर्क इज ऑलवेज मैक्सिमम राइट यू ऑल आर ऑल अवेयर ऑफ द टॉर्क राइट ओके नाउ लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट द इक्विलिब्रियम कंडीशन ऑफ द राइट दैट वी आर गोइंग द मोस्ट टू इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स वी आर गोइंग टू यूज राइट नाउ फर्स्ट द इक्विलिब्रियम कंडीशन एंड सेकेंड द कंजर्वेशन ऑफ द एनर्जी फर्स्ट द इक्विलिब्रियम कंडीशन एंड सेकेंड द कंजर्वेशन ऑफ एनर्जी राइट ओके सो दिस इज नथिंग एल्स बट द एक्चुअल फॉर्मूला ऑफ द टॉर्क हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू यूज दिस हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू कैलकुलेट इट राइट ओके यू हैव टू जस्ट कीप वन थिंग इन टू द माइंड राइट द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ द क्रॉस प्रोडक्ट ऑफ द वैक्टर्स राइट ओके क्रॉस प्रोडक्ट ऑफ वेक्टर्स विल बी मैक्सिमम यूज इन सॉल्विंग द सम्स ऑफ रोटेशनल डायनामिक्स क्रॉस प्रोडक्ट ऑफ द वेक्टर्स विल बी मैक्सिमम यूज्ड इक्विलिब्रियम कंडीशंस बेसिकली वी आर हैविंग द राइट सम ऑफ द इक्विलिब्रियम कंडीशंस वी हैव सीन इनटू द एनएलएम व्हाट वर दोस राइट सपोज द नेट एसेलरेशन अलोंग द एक्स डायरेक्शन इज जीरो राइट देन ऑल द फोर्सेस द समेशन ऑफ ऑल फोर्सेस एक्स डायरेक्शन विल बी जीरो एफ द समेशन द नेट डाय नेट एसेलरेशन अलोंग द वाई इज जीरो देन समेशन ऑफ द ऑल वाई फोर्सेस विल बी जीरो इफ नेट एसेलरेशन अलोंग द एक्स डायरेक्शन इज नॉट इक्विवेलेंट टू जीरो देन समेशन ऑफ द ऑल फोर्सेस विल बी एम ए राइट नेट एसेलरेशन along the x direction and suppose if net acceleration along the y direction is not equivalent to zero then summation of that is ma into net into y direction right summation of the all forces is not equivalent to so this were the conditions of the translational motion so that's why they are known as right the translational equilibrium conditions right translational equilibrium conditions right translational equilibrium conditions right okay now let's move forward to the next part right translational equilibrium condition okay now let's move forward to the next part. what are the conditions for the rotational equilibrium if net torque about center of mass is zero basically torque are of two types first clockwise torque second anti clockwise torque right okay in which direction torque is getting produced we are going to see all of those things into the sum if the net torque is a zero right two conditions are there then we can say the system is in equilibrium system is in rotational equilibrium system is in rotational equilibrium and this means that all the summations of the torques into the anti clockwise that is is equal to all the summations of the torques they are in clockwise right if the net torque about the center of mass is zero or any specific point if this is not happening this is this is not happening suppose the net torque around the center of mass is not equivalent to zero it means that not torque right about any specific point that is always equivalent to i alpha right so this are the conditions for the rotational equilibrium so this are the rotational equilibrium conditions right rotational equilibrium conditions right rotational equilibrium conditions we are going to use this stuff maximum in this 
chapter right and the concepts of torque first of all we are going to see the torque into the very basic manner and then 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 right we are going to into the right uh, uh, roots and we are going to increase the complexity level of the sums now first of all a very simple thing how to calculate a torque see find the torque about the origin when force force see this question this simple question related to the torque has been asked in the 2020 force that is is equal to r cross f right force is 3 j newton position of the particle vector is 2k right force is 3j right force is 3j newton and the position vector of the particle is what 2k what will be the value of the right torque what will be the value of the torque right yes this is an exception now okay see suppose if you want to calculate we can say the cross product of r and f is torque so whenever you want to calculate the cross product right it is always done by means of determinant a small mathematic is there behind it right a small mathematics is there using the determinant suppose if in this case if i want to calculate the force then this torque that will be this is i this is j and this is k first of all in this line always r components are kept and then f components are kept here r is on only z direction so can i say this is 0 0 here f is in only j direction right so can i say this is 3 0 0 so if we are calculating the torque right now how to solve this determinant right in this right we are going to solve this into the very uh, like we, i'm going to solve this but in the next sum right i will show you all into the detail how the determinants are resolved how they are converted into the two cross two determinants right right this are three cross three determinants three rows three columns right three rows three columns okay here the answer will be negative of six of i torque will be negative of six of i newton meter but how we reach up to here i'm going to show you all but this question has been asked in need 2020 okay now let's see this suppose r is 1 comma 2 comma 3 and f is 2 comma 1 comma 1 position vector is given force vector is given and we need to calculate the torque position vector is given force vector is given and we need to calculate the torque see it is done by means of determinant this is 3 cross 3 determinant 3 cross 3 determinant it means that 3 rows and 3 columns i in first we are writing it as i j n k and then immediately components of the r are kept and then components of f see in determinants we are not having the direct solutions for 3 cross 3 in some of the cases even we are having the sums those who are students of mathematics they are even aware of the uh, right concepts of 4 cross 4 determinants we are not having direct solutions for this we are having only direct solution for 2 cross 2 determinants in which we are having 2 rows and 2 columns so uh, what happens here if 4 cross 4 and 3 cross 3 determinants are asked then first there is a technique right there is a way to convert them to transform them into the 2 cross 2 determinants and then they are resolved so suppose if this are 3 cross 3 determinants then first we need to transform this stuff in 2 cross 2 now how we are going to do that suppose if i am picking this i this will be 2 cross 2 right forget this row and forget this column forget this row and column and write the remaining stuff whenever you are dealing with j always keep it as a negative right okay now forget this row and column 
जस्ट राइट डाउन वन टू थ्री एंड वन प्लस के तो दिस ऑल विल बी टू क्रॉस टू डिटर्मिनेंट्स दिस ऑल विल बी टू क्रॉस टू नाउ सपोज इफ यू आर मूविंग ऑन टू के रिमेन लाइक फॉरगेट दिस रो एंड कॉलम देन वी आर हैविंग वन टू टू वन सो सक्सेसफुली वी हैव कन्वर्टेड राइट थ्री क्रॉस थ्री डिटर्मिनेंट्स टू टू क्रॉस टू वी हैव कन्वर्टेड थ्री क्रॉस थ्री डिटर्मिनेंट्स टू टू क्रॉस टू नाउ वी आर हैविंग सोल्यूशन फॉर दिस suppose if i am talking about i we need to cross multiply that will be 2 into 1 minus 3 into 1 minus j right 1 into 1 minus 3 into 2 1 minus 6 plus k 1 into 1 minus 2 into 2 4 so value of the torque it will be 2 minus 3 that is minus of i minus 5 of j minus 3 of k this is the value of the torque that is acting on a position right when this force is applied so whenever there is a particle on this position and this much amount of the force is applied it means that right this much amount of the torque is acting on the particle this is the general way to determine the torque right by the method of determinants and why we use that determinant because torque is nothing else but a cross product of r and f right r and f of r the two vectors and the cross product of that it is nothing else but a torque now this was the basic explanation now how right okay uh, the conditions of the rotational and see the uh, this equations how this conditions we are going to solve this sums into the mechanics this are the uh, this is a quite important part right see now how we are going to use this torque see a rod see this question is asked in need 2013 a rod pq of mass m and length l is hinged at the end p the rod is kept horizontal by massless string tied to the point q at this point it is hinged when the string is cut now suddenly the string is cut angular acceleration of the rod at just a moment when string is cut right just a moment when string is cut see rod is hinged about point p and it is uh, right tied with the string system is in equilibrium all forces are balanced right everything is going on right system is in equilibrium all forces are balanced and it's a good thing now what will happen here suppose if string is going to be cut then about this point b this rod is going to rotate like this way suppose this is a point b i am cutting the string so the rod will rotate like this way right we felt that rotational part na torque is produced we felt that rotational part na right system was like this this is a point p about which it was hinged this is a what the point about it was tied string is cut right we felt a motion we analyzed it yes it the rotational was included it means there is a torque so after string is cut can i say after string is cut the net torque along the point p is not equivalent to zero it means net torque along the point p that is equivalent to i alpha if it would be equivalent to zero then system would be in equilibrium either it could move into with the constant angular velocity but no no right here the net torque about the point d is not zero right okay here the torque is produced so it means that will be equivalent to r alpha now let's plot the fbd for this see here now one thing we are confirmed that torque is produced but who is responsible for that torque which force is responsible see right now we are having only two forces one is nx this is ny this is a normal reaction and the third one is mg this is the point about which we are going to calculate a torque 
so it means torque produced by this normal component will be zero apart from this when string was not cut we were having tension but now we are not having this force also right so it means that only mg is responsible for producing a torque and that enforces the object to move like this way it forces an object to move like this way right so it means right this mg right at the distance of l by 2 this is see always always whenever you are calculating the torque now always take the perpendicular distance of the force never resolve the components of the force always resolves the component of the distance right so in this right obviously you are going to take torque that is is equal to right i of alpha mg into l by 2 about the point p the rod is rotating like this way so what will be the value of moment of inertia ml square by 3 alpha right so alpha it will be equivalent to 3g by 2l this will be the angular acceleration of the rod right c will be the perfect answer for this specific. angular acceleration of the A rope is wound around the hollow cylinder of mass 3 kg and radius of 40 centimeter. There is one cylinder, right, like this way. Rope is wound around it. Mass of the cylinder, that is 3 kg. Radius of the cylinder, it is 40 centimeter what is the angular acceleration of the cylinder if the road is pulled up right see suppose it is pulled up with the force of 30 newton this is mg right so what will be the angular acceleration now see it is pulled up now so first of all to calculate to analyze to come up to the result whether the net torque is acting or not you have to check it out whether the object is getting rotated or not so whenever the 30 newton force is applied into the upward direction cylinder is getting rolled and coming up it means yes torque is being produced right Okay, this question has been asked into the need 2017. So can I say net, see, in the net torque is produced around the point O. It is not equivalent to zero and we can say it is equivalent to I alpha. Right. Now, can I say what will be, the who is going to produce the torque? This force is going to produce the torque and this is the perpendicular distance R. So can I say 30 Newton into the perpendicular distance 0.4 that is equivalent to I of alpha. Right. Okay. Now see alpha that is equivalent to 30 into point of 4 whole divided by moment of inertia. Now what will be the moment of inertia right about uh, right moment of inertia of the cylinder. Right. So that we can replace the value to get the value of the angular acceleration right okay to get the value of the angular acceleration right so i am replacing this as 30 into 0.4 whole divided by for a cylinder right can i write it as mr square right it is 3 into 0.4 whole square so here alpha whole it will be 100 whole divided by 4 that is 25 radian per second square right so this is the angular acceleration of the rod yes Right, we got this stuff from the conditions of the rotational and translational equilibrium. The this question has been asked in 2007 and 6 both. The uniform rod AB of length L and mass M is free to rotate. Initially, the rod, see, rod is just as uh, kept like this way. And it is released. If it is released, then obviously it is not going to stop at this. It be in the equilibrium position. No, 
it is going to have a rotational motion and in that case yes the torque will be produced given that the moment of inertia of the rod about a is ml square by 3 initial angular acceleration of the rod net torque about point a will be equivalent to i alpha net torque about point a that will be equivalent to i alpha right net torque about the point a that will be equivalent to i alpha right okay now which force is responsible for producing the torque suppose it is hinged at point a so at point a we are having two normal one this n and y and n x right so if you are calculating the torque about this point then this two forces are not going to have any torque apart from this we are having only one force that is mg so it means it is going to create a it is going to produce a torque so it is mg right into l by 2 that is equivalent to i alpha moment of inertia there is given ml square by 3 into alpha so what will be the angular acceleration 3g by 2l this is how the torque is calculated right 3g by 2l the c is a perfect answer for this specific question okay now let's move on to the most important concept right let's move on to the concept of conservation of angular momentum uh, so uh, students uh, this was about the talk now let's move on to the most important concept right of the conservation of angular momentum what it states right see uh, first of all i want to tell you all about the angular momentum that you all are aware of that stuff but uh, right now we are going to see right what actually the uh, conservation of the angular momentum is actually there is a relation between the torque and the angular momentum and that is torque that is delta l by delta t change in angular momentum with respect to time that defines the torque now suppose in this case suppose how the angular momentum is conserved if net external torque on the system is zero if net external torque on the system is zero it means that can i say del l by del t for a very small change it is written as dl by dt right for a very small change of a right angular momentum it is written as dl by dt so if a net external torque on the system is zero right can we consider as dl by dt that is equivalent to zero right and if dl any differentiation of any physical quantity if it is zero right so it means that angular momentum is conserved it means that right angular momentum okay is conserved right okay but this is conserved for the system right right this is conserved for the system not for an individual particle right for an individual particle there is always change in momentum and angular impulse is generated right there is always change in momentum and angular impulse is generated but we are talking about the system if net torque on the system is zero net external torque on the system is zero then and then only the angular momentum is conserved now let's see how we are going to use the stuff right okay see a force f is acting on an point r right a force f is acting on an point r the value of alpha at which angular momentum is conserved angular momentum is conserved it means net external torque on the system is zero it means dl by dt that is equivalent to zero or you can say r cross f that is equivalent to zero three statements i'm keeping in front right using any of the three statements we are going to solve that stuff r cross f is zero what is the value of r obviously the determinant is going to be zero it is 2 comma minus 6 right comma minus 12 what is the value of f right it is alpha comma 3 comma 6 alpha comma 3 comma right now in this case right okay the torque will be zero it means that right determinant i j k right and it is 2 minus 6 minus 12 alpha 3 and 6 this will be equivalent to zero 
as usual we have seen the right this 3 cross 3 determinant and we are going to solve this uh, right we are going to uh, need this solution right so this torque will be 0 and it will be i right let's convert this into a 2 cross 2 minus 6 3 minus 12 6 right and uh, minus j 2 alpha minus 12 and 6 right and plus k right 2 alpha minus 6 and 3 that will be equivalent to 0 resolving this you will get the value of the alpha as minus 1 in 2015 this kind of the question has been asked this is the most important degree see sometimes in the je advanced question right, if i'm talking about the jv advanced level right then the uh, question related to the layer this uh, angular momentum has been asked right but there is a maximum possibility right for an conservation of angular momentum to come into that right now let's see the next sum what it states right a solid sphere is rotating freely about the symmetry axis in the free space the radius of the sphere see solid sphere radius of the sphere is increased radius is increased right now mass is kept as same right which of the following physical quantity would remain constant for the sphere for angular momentum to get conserved right first of all we need to check what we need to check whether the net external torque on the system is zero or not yes here the net external torque on the system is completely zero it means what angular momentum is conserved dl by dt is equal to conserved for a system and this angular momentum is going to be constant this angular momentum is going to be constant right so this is how the angular momentum is conserved let's move on to the next part a thin circular ring of mass m and radius r is rotating about its axis with the constant angular velocity omega. Two objects of mass m are gently attached. This is a ring, right? It is rotating, right? Okay. So this is an initial situation. What will be the final situation, right? Two masses are attached to it. Okay, mask of the ring is capital M, right? Now, suppose initially it was rotating with angular velocity omega. Now, after this two masses are attached, the new angular velocity will be omega dash. This situation is given. The ring now, after attaching the two masses, the ring now is rotating with the new angular velocity and that we need to calculate. The question is asked in May 2010 and in 1998. In this, first of all, I want to tell you all that a net external torque on the system is zero. It means angular momentum is conserved. Initial angular momentum that will be equivalent to final angular momentum initial angular momentum that is equivalent to i omega i initial omega initial final this is i final omega final initially only the not disc ring was rotating so can i say its moment of inertia is capital m r square it was rotating with constant angular velocity omega now masses are attached so moment of inertia will be same m r square now this two are attached to n circumference right so obvious the radius of gyration will be r so moment of inertia is small m r square plus right small m r square right into new they all will move with the constant angular velocity new that is omega dash so here omega dash it will be capital m of omega whole divided by capital m plus small right this will be the perfect answer for this specific question right this will be the perfect answer for this specific and system the net external torque is zero yes the angular momentum is correct. suppose this thing is replaced by the four objects a thin circular ring of mass m and radius r is rotating with the constant angular velocity omega now four objects are kept gently to an opposite ends. Initially, 
disk was like this way it was moving constantly its mass is m its radius is r it was constantly moving with the constant uh, this angular velocity omega this is an initial situation now what actually the final situation is four objects of mass m are kept again i want to tell you all right uh, the momentum is conserved why the net external torque on the system is zero so it means momentum is conserved right initial momentum that will be equivalent to final momentum so what was the initial momentum i omega m r square into omega final momentum that is capital m r square plus 4 small m r square into omega dash so what will be the new angular velocity m omega whole divided by m plus 4 of m right b is the perfect answer for this person same now let's see what it states further a solid cylinder of mass 3 kg is rolling on the horizontal surface with velocity it collides okay the situation is like this way this is a solid cylinder right it is rolling velocity is given it is 4 meter per second now here right spring is kept okay it is not sliding it is rolling rolling it means that it is a performing the rotational plus translational motion the resultant of both it is rolling it is performing rotational plus translational the resultant of both it is the rolling right the resultant of both it is rolling now it is a rolling and trying to compress this spring so what is the maximum compression you can phase into this so this is a concept of the work energy theorem work done by all forces that will equivalent to change in kinetic energy of the object but here we are not having any kind of this things right so here whatever the kinetic energy the cylinder is holds while rolling right it is entirely transformed in compressing the spring it means whatever the kinetic energy it holds it is directly converting into the potential energy and mechanical energy is conserved so what this kinetic energy holds right now it is rolling so whenever any rigid body it is rolling and it is having two kind types of the kinetic energies the first one it is a translational and second one it is a rotational so here the translational kinetic energy plus rotational kinetic energy that is equivalent to delta k. sorry that is equivalent to half kx square half kx square right so here also this is one of the applications right we have kept here okay so there it is half mv square plus half i omega square that is equivalent to half kx square replacing all of those stuff values are given we we'll get the x as 0 0.6 meter x as 0 0.6 meter it's a very simple thing okay. most important for the conservation of angular momentum we are going to see here this is rod and it is hinged to this point bullet is coming it is moving with velocity v meter per second it gets embedded into it bullets get embedded right okay it gets after collision it gets embedded into it right then what will be the new angular velocity of the system if I'm talking about the entire system, so the net torque on the system is completely zero, net external torque on the system is zero, angular momentum is conserved, right? Now, as angular momentum is conserved, can I say initial angular momentum that is equivalent to final angular momentum? Initial angular momentum that would be equivalent to what? Final angular momentum. What is the initial? See, angular momentum about the point A is conserved, right? So, about point A, initial angular momentum is, right, M V R, final is I omega, right? Suppose this is of mass capital M, this is of mass small m, right? So, initial is M V R, final is, now when it gets embedded into the 
right and they both starts rotating like this way so this is a final situation right they both starts moving with the angular velocity omega and the bullet is inside it now the system is of mass m plus capital m right so what will be the final moment of inertia with respect to point a small l is moving with l square or you can say r square right this is also r plus right for rod the moment of inertia will be ml square by 3 right here l is equivalent to r only okay and it is omega so this is 4 by 3 m r square omega and that is m v of r right so this one r is going to cancel this m is going to cancel 3 v by 4 r this will be the new angular velocity of the rod after this get embedded into it this is how the angular momentum is concerned right okay this is how the angular momentum is conserved right now apart from this conservation of angular momentum right obviously right one thing is remaining in this chapter right and that is the concept of rolling now let's uh, see what actually the rolling states okay so uh, students let's move on to the most important concepts of the rolling right Okay, see, first of all, what does the rolling states? It itself states something that is rotation plus something that we are having translation. The resultant of this we are having as a rolling. It means at the same time the particle is rotating also and the particle is translating also. Let us take an example right suppose this pan is rotating at this moment right so it is performing the rotational motion suppose the plane is sliding down so it is performing the translatory motion so something combination of both that is rotational plus translational is rolling right so let us take an example suppose this is a ground i'm going to take the example to understand this suppose this is a ground the rolling is having the very less theories right to understand Suppose this is a ground. Particle is rolling also with the angular velocity omega, right? And it is moving forward also with the linear velocity. So after uh, some uh, time, the new position of the particle will be this, and it is again rotating with the omega. The new position of the particle will be this, and it is rotating with omega. New position of the particle is this. So it is rotating also, and it is getting translated also right so this kind of the motion it is known as a rolling basically we are having the two types of the rollings right the first one right it is known as the forward slipping and second one right it is known as backward slipping now how we are going to classify this forward slipping how we are going to classify this backward slipping and how we are going to understand the concept of pure rolling right for this right we need to first of all understand right the velocity and the acceleration diagrams of the rolling as i said something that is rotated again i'm drawing this stuff okay this is a right rotation plus translational and in result we are getting this stuff right velocity diagram of a particle of a particle that is rolling see the something that is this is the translational motion of a particle on a translational motion right the velocity of a particle on the right circumference is same right it is possessed by the velocity by the center of mass velocity at the each point when the particle is performing the translational motion it is same 
when it is performing the rotational motion right when it is performing the rotational motion right okay then velocity is defined as like this way r omega right r omega r omega r omega so this is for the rotational motion the resultant of this we are having ruling so it means can i say at the top v is also in this direction r omega is also in this direction so resultant is v plus r omega right at this point v is in this direction right r omega is in this direction so resultant is in this direction this is the resultant right this is the resultant at this point v is in this direction r omega is in this direction so this is the resultant at this point v is in this direction and r omega is in this direction so resultant is zero this is the velocity diagram for the right. this point is going to define whether the particle is going to perform pure rolling the particle is going to perform right the forward slipping or the particle is going to perform the backward slipping this is the velocity diagram similarly right we are having the acceleration diagrams also for the rolling right suppose uh, this is the rotation right plus this is the translational and this is equivalent to rolling right this is rolling right and this is a rotational motion and this is a translational motion as the velocity at the each point right in uh, in the translational motion is same so in this case the acceleration is also same at each point right the acceleration is also same at each point for a rotational motion we are having the two types of the acceleration first that is an tangential acceleration that is r alpha right and for a particle that is moving right okay for that is uh, performing the rotation it is having the right omega square r right that is centripetal acting towards the center two types of accelerations are there right for a particle that is performing the rotation one that is a tangential acceleration second that is a centripetal the resultant of this two is rolling resultant of this two is rolling so at this point a will be in this direction r alpha will be in this direction net acceleration is zero omega square r is in upward direction at this point a is in this direction right r omega is in this direction omega square r is in this direction sorry not r omega it's r alpha right it's r alpha at this point a is in this direction omega square r is in this direction r alpha is in this direction a plus r alpha right so this is what the acceleration diagram of the rolling is right generally from rolling right the theoretical questions related to the forward slipping backward slipping right and uh, questions related to the diagram and the combination of this concepts with the work energy theorem is asked right combination of this concept with the work energy theorem is asked now let's see this kind of the questions right okay but before that let's analyze the, what actually the forward slipping and the backward slipping is now if you have seen the velocity and the acceleration diagram of the ruling you can see at this point v minus r omega is zero even for the acceleration diagram a minus r alpha is also zero right v minus r omega is zero a minus r alpha is zero it means that the relative velocity of the particle at the bottom is zero and the relative acceleration of the particle at the bottom is zero it means this particle is not going to this is not going to displace the, the relative motion between the particle and the bottom most contact surface is zero 
right so as because of this v is equivalent to r omega and a is equal to r alpha this are the conditions of pure rolling right okay this are the conditions of pure rolling in pure rolling the particle that is at the bottom most point does not perform any relative motion with respect to the contact surface so in that case a is equivalent to r alpha and v is equivalent to r omega at the bottom most point now here comes the forward slipping right here comes the forward slipping in forward slipping what happens right the bottom most point see v is greater than r omega it is moving right forward with the v and it is rolling with the r omega right so forward slipping means what the translational velocity of the particle is more as compared to the rotational one whenever let us take an example whenever you are applying the right side brake not the disc brake of the front tire right then tire translates more slides more as compared to the rotation that's the best example of the forward slipping so in that case what will happen right friction x into the backward direction right so forward slipping friction x into the backward direction right and it will increase the rotational it will increase the r omega right and after some time pure rolling is attained after some time pure rolling is attained what is a backward slipping in backward slipping v is less than r omega a car tire stuck into the mud rotational part is more as compared to the translational one so in that case friction acting to the forward direction right right that will decrease the omega right that will decrease the omega and after some time right the pure rolling is attained this is what the rolling is all about and in rolling basically there are two kind of the kinetic energies first that is a translational kinetic energy and second one that is a rolling uh, this rotational kinetic now let's see uh, one of two sums related to it right uh, because the applications of this with the work energy theorem is are only asked into the examination okay see the speed of the homogeneous solid sphere after rolling down an inclined plane of vertical height h will be what solid sphere is rolling down right what is the speed at the bottom most point it is rolling down it means it is performing the rotational motion also and it is performing the translational motion so whatever amount of the potential energy he is possessing right it is right entirely converted into the kinetic energy it means mgh now here it is having two types of kinetic energy first that is a translational kinetic energy second that is a rotational kinetic energy right so solving this stuff we are getting m will uh, so here mgh that is equivalent to half mv square plus half this will be 2 by 5 mr square omega square now it is rolling down so can i replace here as v is equivalent to r omega it is rolling down na right so first of all m will get cancelled right so gh that is is equal to v square by 2 plus right v square by 5 so v that is is equal to under root of 10 gh by 7 this is the velocity of the particle right at the bottom most point of an inclined plane c is a perfect answer so rolling either from rolling related questions related to the uh, work energy theorem as asked in which two types of the conservations a uh, kinetic energy is there or the questions from the velocity or acceleration diagrams are asked some planck based questions are there Right. lots of questions are there but it's okay they will i will attach all of those stuff into the dpp right for this right the important thing is all about the concept what actually it states a solid spherical ball rolls on the table see there is a spherical ball it rolls on the table rolls it means that it is performing the translational and rotational motion 
रेशियो ऑफ रोटेशनल काइनेटिक एनर्जी सी वॉट इज द रोटेशनल काइनेटिक एनर्जी हाफ आई ओमेगा स्क्वायर इट इज अ सॉलिड स्पीयर सो कैन आई से हाफ इंटू टू बाई फाइव एम आर स्क्वायर ओमेगा स्क्वायर सो इट इज राइट एम वी स्क्वायर बाई फाइव कंसिडर दिस इज इक्वेशन नंबर वन रोटेशनल काइनेटिक एनर्जी टू टोटल टोटल काइनेटिक एनर्जी दैट इज इज इक्वल टू हाफ आई ओमेगा स्क्वायर प्लस हाफ एम वी स्क्वायर दैट इज इज इक्वल टू सेवन बाई टेन एम वी स्क्वायर राइट so can i consider this is equation number 2 so ratio of right uh, rotational right to total that is equivalent to 2 by 7 right d is a perfect that's the case of rolling apart from this right velocity of an particle rolling down an inclined plane it is also asked right okay an acceleration of the particle it's rolling down the inclined plane is also asked so guys this is a homework question from my side right okay so the most important part related to je and neat right everything has been discussed in this chapter right with lots of examples right so students uh, this was all about the rotational motion i think it's time to go again we are going to come back with the gravitation and uh, or some things we are going to discuss so guys this is indrajit singh we'll be waiting for all of your feedback this is indrajit singh signing off from the desk bye bye sat sri akal and namaste from my side bachcha ji bye everyone stay at home stay safe stay healthy ms this pandemic bye bachcha ji